So let's get back to NAD production and particularly in terms of your brand, Nichido, because you've actually produced a supplement that can help. Well, I'll let you explain it, but I've actually been starting to, I started taking this supplement literally when I met you um, about a month ago. And I'm really interesting, interested to see how what happens to the results. So I've actually taken um, a test before I did it. Um, my well, we can go on and talk about biological and chronological age, but I took a test before, and I'm going to be taking another test in a few months' time. So watch this space to see what happens. But I'll let you explain a little bit more, uh, Nicola, about your supplement. Yeah, so so NAD was a, a huge area of interest for us. It was something that was gaining a lot of momentum um, in the scientific world as, as a molecule that was very important for aging. As we've just discussed, it's very important for cellular energy production and also repair, but it declines with age. So scientists said, okay, if we've got this really important molecule and it's doing all of these important jobs in the cell, but it goes down, then why don't we just not let it go down? Why don't we um, keep levels topped up or restore them back to youthful levels? So to cut a very long story short, there are now hundreds, if not thousands of scientific papers to show that if you can restore cellular NAD levels, then you can actually improve multiple different aspects of not only cellular health, but health span. So really improve your, your core health. So this is not just anti-aging in terms of skin. This is, you know, how you're feeling inside as well in your general health. So it's, it's becoming a, a very, very exciting area of research. And often when anything comes out to do with aging, what that means is there's then a flurry of, of companies and people trying to, you know, put whatever it is in a bottle or in a pill um, and, and sell it. Um, so initially what happened was um, a lot of, you know, brands popped up that were putting this pure NAD into capsules and, you know, putting it on Amazon and <laughs> saying, you know, yeah. top up your NAD. Now, unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. Um, and this is because NAD is, is quite an unstable molecule. So it doesn't survive very well outside the body. Um, so if you do see any supplements on Amazon that are labeled as pure NAD, um, they will definitely not have any NAD in them by the time they arrive at your doorstep. Um, and if they did, it definitely wouldn't survive through your gut. Um, um, so it's it's not an option to just take pure NAD supplements, unfortunately. So IV drip, does that work? So I know that there's a lot of obviously having been to a biohacking conference and knowing and here listening to a, a lot of people in the US, I think it's very quite popular there to get a drip that's that's with NAD. Yeah, so IV drips and injections are something that have popped up a lot recently. And the idea behind these were that, okay, so if NAD is unstable, if you can't take it in oral capsules, then maybe if you can infuse it or inject it directly into the blood, um, you can get around this issue. So it does get around the issue of it not being bioavailable. But the issue that we still have is that NAD actually doesn't do very much at all in the blood, where it performs its function is actually in the cells so just to just to pick up on what you said what does bioavailable mean Oh, so bioavailable means basically when you um when you take a, a drug a supplement or anything like where does it get to so if you take something orally, obviously you don't want it just to stay in your mouth. You, you're taking it with the purpose that it's going to travel through the gut. It's then either going to diffuse through um, the, the lining of our gut into our blood and, and perform its action. But then it's also, in the case of NAD, because NAD doesn't do anything in the blood, has to then get into the cells of our body. And cells are, you know, they don't just let anything in or out. They're very, very controlled about what passes through and what doesn't. So some things have very good bioavailability, which means that they just diffuse straight through, no issues, and, and get to everywhere that they need to be in the body. Other things cannot do that. 
they rely on what are called special like channels or transport of proteins to actually move them across, which are like little gates um, that, that will allow things to pass in and out of the cells. So in the case of NAD, NAD is not something that can just diffuse freely through into cells. It relies on these special little channels or these special gates. And when it comes to IV NAD, what we know is that it gets the NAD into the blood, but many of our cells don't have any of these little channels that are big enough to let the whole NAD molecule in. And actually what we now know is that NAD is naturally made within our cells for this very reason, because it is so big that our cells make it inside the cell where it's needed to avoid this whole issue of having to, to get it across the cell membrane when it's so large. So how do then, how do your supplement, supplements work um, and what makes them different to like you say, there's a lot of you, Google NAD, you can look at Amazon and, you know, Holland and Barrett or whatever and buy some, some, something that says it can boost your NAD. Yeah. So what we know is that when something goes down in the body, um, there's usually a reason for it. So in the case of NAD, we know that it declines and we now know that the reason NAD declines is because the pathway within our cells that actually makes NAD naturally within us declines with age. So what our supplement is designed to do is to actually switch your own natural NAD production back on. And this is very different to a lot of other supplements out there. So Obviously, it's different to just putting pure NAD in a pill, which absolutely does not work. But the other type of NAD supplements that are very common that are out there are something called precursors. That's, so, I'm guessing I'm, I'm, that's the MNN that I have been taking um, that David Sinclair talks about, which I believe are becoming illegal in the US. Yes, exactly that. So the precursors, people will often hear ones called NMN or NR. They're the two most common ones. And what they are is they are basically the raw material that the body uses to make NAD. So the idea behind those supplements are that, okay, if you can't put pure NAD in a pill, then why don't we just give the body more of the raw material that it needs to make NAD in a capsule and take it and hope that somehow the body will make it into NAD. Um, now that's the sort of the, the sort of theory behind those supplements. Now the issue with those is that we now know that the main pathway in the cell that takes that raw material and converts it into NAD declines with age. So you can take as much NMN or NR precursor as you want. But if you don't have that enzyme or that pathway that can actually convert it into NAD, then it's a bit of a waste of time. And I always sort of get people to, to think about it with a, an analogy of a bit of a like a car factory. So imagine you had a, a factory and um, over the years, the production in the factory had you know significantly gone down. And you knew that the real reason why production had gone down was because the machines were old, they were broken, the pipes were leaking, nothing was working. Would you think the best way to fix that issue in increased production is to just order more steel, order more raw material and hope that more cars come out at the other I'm end? Not, no, no. Not you'd want to fix the factory. Yeah. So that is exactly what our product does. It fixes the root causes of the NAD decline in the cells so that your body can just keep naturally making its own NAD like it did when it was younger.